Hey friends, welcome to another episode on Git and GitHub. This time we'll talk about how you can contribute to a project that you're working on with your colleagues or other collaborators. What you This is where you start out, right? You start off on a main branch. This is where all your code live. This is where Git is tracking all the files and all the changes. So you start on this main branch and what's next? Well, you want to isolate yourself. You don't want to keep working on the main branch because you risk tripping over each other and most likely the main branch is also going into production so you don't want to do a change and push that to main and you end up with something in production that you don't want so when you're working on a feature you should be working on a branch and the way to get a branch in git is to use git and the keyword branch and then you type a name for your branch and this will create a feature branch now, so imagine that this is like a fork in the road with the main branch being the main road and the feature branch being the side road. So you can keep working in isolation. You're not going to bother anyone. That code is not going to end up in production for now. You keep on working, you add your files, you change your files and you commit your files. Once you're done doing all that and you're ready to bring all those changes back into the main branch, what you can do is then position yourself in the feature branch and do git merge main and this is how you signal that you're ready to take all the changes uh, that's in main and bring that into your feature branch why you do it that way is to make sure that uh, the idea is before you merge the two branches is that you first merge from main uh, to to into your feature branch because your colleagues might have added stuff to your main branch that you need to be aware of this is to reduce the risk of getting a conflict. So start by merging, uh, place yourself in the feature branch, merge, uh, then uh, bring in all those changes from main into your feature branch once you're ready to do that. So uh, once you've done that first merge between uh, uh, when you bring the changes from main into your feature branch, you are ready to go to your main branch and do git merge feature branch and this effectively brings in your feature branch into your main at this point in time everything is good when working with colleagues though especially if you work on github there's a different way of doing this and that is to uh, create your feature branch as normal but instead of uh, merging between branches in this way you could be creating a pull request on github but let's take this slowly. This is just to give you a quick intro, uh, a quick overview of what's going on. So let's go back to our sample project and let's do a change to it. Okay, so here we have a file, uh, an index.html. We are part of the main branch. We can see that because it's, it's telling us so. There are a few ways to create this branch. We could either be typing git branch feature one, for example. This would create a branch. We can do it that way. Or we could be typing git checkout minus b feature one. What this would mean is that it would create the feature one branch and it will also place us in that branch. So I'm going to try that. So you see, as you can see, it says switch to a new branch. And that's great, right? So now we're in isolation. So maybe I want to add something to our code here and I want to say feature. And per usual, I am typing git status, and it's telling us you have a modification. I can either add the file by file name, and because I only have one file, I'm going to say dot, meaning match everything in here. And now you can see how it's in a green mode. If I don't like that change, I can do git reset either on the, in that specific file or just do an empty, in which case it will tell us, okay, you're back in the mode, you're not ready to commit yet. But yeah, because I am ready to commit this change, I'll do that. And you see how it's now in a green mode. It says changes to be committed. I'm going to commit. Add change to feature branch. Great. I can also trace this with via git log so I can see that I have a change. That's great. Uh, I'm one step closer to actually contributing this to the GitHub repo. Currently, I've done all these changes locally. Uh, because I'm on a feature branch, I'm well set up to do the next step, which is to push this to a GitHub branch. Uh, sorry, I'm ready to push uh, whatever I have here to GitHub. 
by calling git push, it will tell me what to do. So it's telling me to do git push dash dash set dash upstream with origin and uh, feature one. This will effectively take my local branch and place it remotely, which is what we want to do. So what you saw here was how it pushed that branch into my GitHub repo. And it's even nice enough to give me a link here that we're about to click. This link will uh, start us off in a mode that where we are ready to create a pull request. And this is the way if we work with GitHub, this is the way that you should be merging in whatever changes you have. Okay, so it's setting us up. So we're saying adding stuff to index HTML. A good practice here is to have a very descriptive title of what's going on. Add change to feature branch isn't very descriptive. Um, probably something update. You, you should be using some kind of semantic keyword is my point. So update index HTML and, and maybe something that says, you know, is this a feature? Is this a bug? I would argue that this is a feature, right? Because feature index HTML, better text. Now at least people know what I'm doing if I'm fixing something or if I'm adding a new feature. I'm adding a new feature. Index HTML, better text. And if people actually want to know what's going on, I can just hit create pull request at this point. In the pull request that's being created, this is just checking it for various tools. If you've got various tools set up that has the ability to scan your code. So here we can see if we hit files change, how this is our new change. Hello feature. And the idea here of the pull request is that it uh, is an attempt to pull changes in from some other branch into the main branch. So you can see if you read this here, it says wants to merge one commit into main from feature. So by having a pull request, this gives people the opportunity, your colleagues, your collaborators to go in and say, hey, Chris, um, I like what you've done here or no, I actually have a comment. Uh, an excellent way for your colleagues then to go in and say, well, if they were to click this, they would actually add a suggestion. And, and this is a fantastic feature in, in uh, GitHub. It will tell them like, well, I'm not sure about hello feature. If you were to do uh, feature X, I like it better. Uh, so normally your colleagues do that and, and not you, but when they do that, it gives you the ability to say like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I kind of see your point. I want to do exactly that. So if there's only one of these uh, suggestions that your colleagues have created for you, then you can just hit commit. But if it's many of them, you want to add them to a batch, right? And by adding them to a batch means that it's going to be one commit if there's like 23 different changes instead of 23 different commits for every time you hit this button. So you add suggestions to batch. That is excellent. So now it's pending in the batch and you are ready to commit. And this thing commits to your uh, branch, your feature branch, not the main, right? Which means that your code is now updated. And were you to go into your repo, you can hit a git pull because that commit happened for real. And you can now see how it says feature X. So this excellent collaboration tool. Okay. so. Uh, seems like your colleagues was happy with your uh, feature branch right or, or the your pull request in this case whatever they weren't happy with they were able to use a suggestion and say hey instead of feature let's do feature x and at this point probably not you but one of your colleagues would say okay chris i like whatever changes you did here i am going to either squash and merge, in which case it would take your many commits and make them one nice commit. This is some people want to do that. Or they might want to do a rebase and merge, or they simply merge the pull request. And in this case, this, as I said again, this shouldn't be you. But if it is you, make sure that you have gone through all the changes. You hit merge pull request and you confirm merge. So at this point, uh, what you can see here is how this feature request is uh, or, or this pull request is being merged and you can see how index HTML now are, is being updated from the feature branch. And you also see that there are two different branches, main and feature one, which and you pushed off feature branch remotely. 
uh, from your local machine into this repo. So if you want it to go away, you can do so. I, I own this repo, right? Which means that, uh, so normally a branch isn't being pushed remotely uh, into the actual source repo if you're contributing to a large, let's say the Angular or Vue repo, but they would rather be pushed towards a clone. What we've gone through now is you working on, at a company, for example, right? Where you have the rights to a repo. And if you don't have the rights to a repo, uh, what you can do, so in this case, for example, let's say that you found this web dev for beginners repo and you're saying, well, I actually, I actually want to contribute to this repo. And the way to do that is to hit the fork. And what fork is doing is creating a copy that you could be working on. Right, so I think I've already have the ML for beginners repo, but let's pretend I don't. So what it's done for me here is to just create a ML for beginners one to uh, differ from the actual one. So this is my first step, right? I want to contribute. I hit the fork uh, button. So I've done that. Now I have a local clone of this repo, meaning that I want to do that. So let's say then instead that instead of working on the sample repo, I want to work on this ML repo and I want to change stuff. Um, so I'm doing that. I can't just take the address, but I need to git clone it. Okay, so we can see that we have git cloned the repo, ML for beginners, that's excellent. And let's actually place ourselves in this repo by this command. Okay. Uh, my first order of business when I want to contribute to a repo is to make sure that I'm in isolation, which means I'm going to create that branch. I'm going to create it a test branch. Remember now, this is my clone. This is not the actual ML for beginners, but it's rather the one that I forked, right? So git checkout minus b test. This is me creating a branch. I'm placing myself in the test branch. You see the name is being reflected here. And maybe I'm saying like, hey, I want to contribute some way. And I want to go into README. And I want to change something really small. I will remove this PR, by the way, from this repo. But let's say I want to do that. So now Git is actually saying, hey, Chris, you actually did a change. Did you want to do that? Yes, I did. I do Git add dot and test change. Commit. That's great. And now it's telling me, like the last time when we own the repo completely, it's the same uh, method. Git push setup stream origin test. Now it's pushing this uh, branch not to the original ML for beginners, but rather to my forked version of this repo. And now have a look at this PR. And I'm going to say we'll close it. Um, and yeah, I create a pull request. But now this pull request is actually opening itself up on their side of things. Uh, I have merged rights on this repo because I work for Microsoft, but if I didn't, it would be a Microsoft employee who would be looking at your PR because right now the PR is being created on the Microsoft side of things, but the branch that you just pushed, the test branch, ends up on your uh, version of, uh, of this, the, your forked repo. So that's uh, all I thought I'd cover uh, in this video. So we've covered how to create a branch and also how to uh, create a pull request. And this is how you can start contributing and uh, towards, you know, for example, ML for beginners, web dev for beginners, or whatever repo that you found out there on GitHub. So good luck in all your future uh, contributions and I hope this was a video worth watching.